So I'm going to jump into single point of failures today. Um, the thing here is it's not really necessarily a cloud problem. Uh, you should really try and reduce single point of failures wherever possible. However, one thing that we definitely do see is uh, when you're moving onto the cloud, uh, it becomes extremely important to just reduce risk is to get rid of any single point of failure. So I'm just going to go through like a typical web server stack again. Um, So we can just pretend that this is on-prem at this point or, or hosted um, in a you know, really standard environment where you have a singular VM and then it talks to a database. Um, and so either one of these at this point is a single point of failure, right? Um, big thing that's happened in our industry and when moving to the cloud is the ability to add more VMs. So that's the idea of horizontal scale. So this... Um, gives you duplication, right? And so then this will become um, an unlikely area where your system will go down because you'll be able to allocate more and more resources. Um, so once this is migrated to the cloud, um, it's really recommended that you're running two or more servers um, and then you have like a load balancer handling the traffic. Um, so once that happens, um, then your single point of failure will become the database. And so as you're identifying and fixing these, um, you know, you're really reducing your risk greatly. Um, and, and, you know, you can also think of it as adding more performance and things like that. There's other really good benefits to having this in place. Um, if you're moving a database like SQL Server on SQL Azure, um, what's actually happening kind of behind the scenes is we are um, building a set of three replicas and that's getting synced. So there are technologies out there that really enable you to not think too much of this being a single point of failure. Um, but you might want to address this uh, with, you know, depending on how you're doing your data storage. Uh, but the idea being that um, if you were trying to reduce risk, you might actually want to stand up another database um, and then maybe have some synchronization happening. And so at this point then, um, again, this kind of architecture has no single point of failure um, and so is a lot more resilient. Um, and at this point, this might be like, you know, data center in West US and this is in the East um, kind of thing. So you have like serious geographical boundaries there with the sync happening. Um, and your fault tolerance at that level then is, is really huge because even if, you know, an act of God takes out the data center in the West, um, you're still up and running uh, on the data center in the east. So again, um, with or without moving to the cloud, but especially when you move onto the cloud, really try and figure out what your point of failures are, your single point of failures, and determine a way that you can make it so you can have more than one of that resource. By doing this, you should have better performance. More importantly, you'll be reducing risk. Um, and then you can also start thinking about patterns you know, to, sp to span the globe, really. Um, and keep you up and running no matter what happens uh, within any, any data center. Anyways, I hope this was helpful, and we'll chat soon. I'm Jeff King on Twitter, Jeff King ABC. Bye.